All right. I believe match number two here was somebody you're familiar with. Bam Bam Bigelow lost to Tatanka. To Tatanka. Any stories on Tatanka, Rob? Okay. You'll like this one. Okay. <laughs> None of these stories are known by anybody, I don't think, that I do on these podcasts, that I even do on my ideology, on my standalone. All right, anyway, boom. So I met um, Tatanka in 1991, as a matter of fact, shortly after uh, I met downtown Bruno in Memphis because I was in USWA doing their weekly loop uh, for a little bit in the summer. And then after that was used up, I called uh, Ron Slinker, who I'd met at USWA, who I would eventually travel down to Florida and start the ICW with and get Rob Van Damme, all that. But said, hey, what the hell? They we're, we're done with our programs here. What what you know? What, how's Florida looking? And he's like, Oh, I'm not I'm not quite ready yet. I need a couple more weeks. He said, Here, call my friend Manny Fernandez in uh, South Carolina. He's starting up this promotion, uh, or he's got yeah, South Atlantic Pro Wrestling. So I drove my illegal ass uninsured Ford Mustang that was held together by coat hangers with like a hundred bucks in my pocket. Um, and I drove from um, 18 years old. What did I just say? Um, no, 89, 91. I guess I was going to be 20. Wait, in 90, this is 91. So I guess I just, I, I am 20. Mm -hmm. I don't know to drink anyway. I don't know to drink. Uh, I'm a kid from my experiences. Very inexperienced. But anyway. Um, hey, hey baby. Hey baby. Um South I, I had a two day adventure getting there, my car broke down, all this stuff. And anyway, um South Atlantic Pro Wrestling was based out of Charlotte. And at this time, Manny Fernandez was the booker. Um they had some future stars like uh Vince Torelli, who would later be Ken Shamrock. Oh. Yeah, jacked. He was a badass. Everyone told me uh, what a badass he was. You know, they, they said that he had won the last five tough man contests in a row there. And Manny Fernandez is one of those guys that has reputations. Uh, him and Dick Murdoch used to get in fights with like legend, legendarily, um, you know, like bars full of patrons and stuff. And, you know, those kind of back in the old days. Uh, so anyway, Manny is known to be pretty tough. And, and, and everyone told me when I first started there that Vince Torelli had jacked Manny up against the wall in an argument and that Manny was scared. Uh, and that he'd won the last contest. And I was watching him jump up and down, warming up before his match. And he was like jumping like four and a half feet straight up. And I was like, wow, what an athlete. And uh, he was wrestling a guy that would be uh, eventually Tatanka named Chris Chavis. Oh. Yeah. And so Vince Torelli versus Chris Chavis was the matchup. And that was what I saw on the road for the short time that I was there for my first stint in South Atlantic pro wrestling. After a couple of weeks, I ended up going home. I ended up coming back after Greg Price took it over and I was already living in Florida, blah, blah, blah. But while I was there during this time, South Atlantic Pro Wrestling office was at this real estate place and Manny Fernandez called a meeting for the talent. So us wrestlers are all in this office and Manny is pissed because something happened the night before that wasn't good for the business. And um, there was a bar nightclub called, uh, I think it was called Plum Cherries or maybe just Plum, but I think it was called Plum Cherries. Dude, this was so long ago. Give me a break if I'm a little off. Yeah, but 91's a long time ago. <laughs> Dude, Plum or Plum Cherry. And anyway, um, the boys would go there and hang out. 
And the night before, there was a fight there. And one of the guys got carried out by the bouncers. And Manny was pissed. He was pissed. And this is a difference between how the business used to be and the the safe, work-friendly environment that it is now with the... Um, with the politically correct and the um, equal opportunity. And this was a different world back then. All right. And so uh, he was pissed because the guy was his uh, champion that got carried out by the bouncers. And, uh, and that was Chris Chavis, who was also uh, Tatanka. And um, Manny told all of us, he was screaming like, how is that going to be my world champion when he's seen being carried out? By four bouncers. What kind of world champion is that? How am I going to make money with him now? He said, and he told all of us, he said, you don't ever, ever let them carry you out. He said, I don't care if it's your fault, how many of them are, you're going to go out swinging. You go out swinging and take as many of them with you. And so, you know, that's that's my uh, Chris Chavis Tatanka story. Uh, he had he uh, I don't know who he got in a fight with some mark I think someone that wasn't in the business and I don't know if they literally carried him you know like uh, horizontally or if it was just you know dragging him by his arms but either way Manny uh, just like other old schoolers told me back there in the day that that was the way the business was like if you got seen carried out you might get your ass beat in the dressing room the next day right I, I think about like uh the mafia too, or like you can watch the Sopranos and like that scene where Johnny Sachs got arrested or something and he started crying and everybody's like, what the fuck? He's crying. You don't want that to happen. 